Mm, they say that anyone can do this well guess what anyone is doing it here we go it's another sunday it's another fun day it is time to improve your english yes this is english addict coming to you live from the birthplace of english which just happens to be oh my goodness <gasps> i don't believe it england Here we are again hi everybody this is mr duncan in england how are you today are you okay i hope so are you feeling happy i hope you are feeling happy today because we are back again once more across youtube across the internet we are now live as live can be yes hi we've made it to the end of another week and also the end of another weekend because today it's Sunday welcome It's so good to be back with you again today. Oh, it's lovely. It's lovely to be here. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I had a wonderful sleep last night, but I really do feel on the ball. On the ball. It's a great expression. If you are on the ball, it means you are alert. You are ready to do the thing that you have prepared earlier and I feel on the ball very sharp my mind is like a razor blade I'm so alert I can't believe it maybe it's because I had a wonderful sleep last night I had the most bizarre dream last night now for those who know me well you will know that quite often we have animals at the back of the house last night I had a really funny dream I dreamt that some cows were put in the field at the back of the house but not only cows there were also zebras as well I don't know why so there were a hundred cows and also zebras in the field at the back of my house according to my subconscious brain isn't that weird so what does that mean what does it all mean the good thing is I had a lovely sleep last night very restful I went to bed with a smile on my face and a skip in my step do you know why we have such a busy show today I can't begin to tell you how much we have coming up today in fact I have so little time I can't even tell you what is coming up today you see so there is so little time I can't believe it and by the way talking of time I was on time today did you notice I wasn't late Ooh, so that's very nice outside at the moment it is a very gloomy day there it is the view outside the window right now it is a gloomy day here in the UK misty it looks well I suppose you could say that it is very autumnal autumnal today it's not an easy word to say <laughs> it's very autumnal so we have autumn in the air but it is rather misty rather cool and very damp it is a damp day here in the UK mr. Steve has been outside all morning would you like to have a little look at what mr. Steve is up to so this is what he was doing about around about 20 minutes ago I was secretly filming mr. Steve would you like to have a look I'm not sure what he's doing but I'm sure he will explain later on when he arrives here he is so what is mr. Steve up to what are you doing mr. Steve it looks as if 
he's doing something rather technical maybe some alterations to the house maybe he is repairing something I'm sure Steve will explain what he's doing I'm sure he will tell us all about it later on meanwhile we are all together again on the live chat yes one of the most amazing things about this is you don't just get to see my lovely handsome face you can also get involved with the live chat as well yes we are now live at nine minutes past two o'clock on a Sunday it is the 8th of November of course yesterday I suppose yesterday will go down in history as the day when there was a big change in the United States mm, that's all I'm saying maybe Mr Steve will want to talk a little bit about that later on as I mentioned we have the live chat nice to see so many people here already who was first on the live chat I wonder mm, Ooh, something very unusual I can't remember the last time this particular person was first on the live chat but congratulations Tomek guess what Ooh, fancy pants you are first on today's live chat <laughs> may I dop my cap to you good sir thank you very much for joining me today I hope you are feeling good we also have Vitas here sorry Vitas your finger was not fast enough today unfortunately we also have Olga Redouan watching in Morocco hello Morocco by the way if you want to tell me where you are please tell me so don't just give me your name I'm also intrigued to find out where you are in the world where you are watching right now hello to Lekleet hello Lekleet nice to see you as well Florence we have Beatrice we also have Luis Mendez hello Luis a big bonjour to you also Mog Mog Maria sweetness Malia lolly lolly wow so many people are here already I can't believe it we are talking about fame today fame being famous being a celebrity so I thought today an interesting subject and one of the reasons why I want to talk about this today is because a couple of days ago I, I discovered a website this is amazing there is a website I won't tell you the name unless of course they send me lots of money in which case I will mention the name but there is a, a website where you can send messages or you can get a famous celebrity to send you a message so you can actually contact a famous person and you can ask them to send a personal video message a celebrity can you believe it although there is one condition there is one condition you have to pay so today I thought it would be interesting to take a look at some of the people that are on that website some of the celebrities and we might also play the game of the price of fame so how much do these celebrities charge for their messages so today as I mentioned we are talking all about fame we are talking about being famous we are talking about fame being a celebrity fancy that of words lots of phrases connected to being a celebrity being 
famous that is what we are doing later on Ooh. and as i mentioned we are going to take a look at some of the well-known celebrities some of them are well known some of them not so well known and one or two of them pretending to be celebrities so there is a website i'm not going to give the name i'm not going to tell you the name of the website because i think they should send me lots of money and then i will do it but <laughs> there is a website where you can actually get a famous person to send you a message so we are going to look at that a little bit later on we also have mr steve as well oh yes mr steve will be here don't worry mr steve at the moment is outside or maybe perhaps he's on the toilet Ooh. oh okay mr steve thank you very much so there is mr steve <laughs> i apologize if you are having your lunch or maybe your breakfast or your dinner i'm sorry about that valentina says oh mr duncan is there really a website where celebrities can send you personal messages yes there is we're going to have a look at it later on but we are going to guess how much the celebrity charges you for the message so all of the prices are different depending on how big they are so that's what we're doing a little bit later on maybe george clooney can send me a birthday greeting mm. i'm not sure if george clooney is actually on that website maybe maybe not we will have a look later on hello to fly audi hello fly audi that is very nice very nice to see you here today al e ali says mr duncan i want to be famous like you <laughs> can i can i just say something if there is one thing that i don't feel like if there is one thing that i never wake up in the morning and consider myself as it is a celebrity i don't consider myself famous or big or a celebrity i think on youtube i am a little bit of a secret you see so i always like to say that i am youtube's best kept secret because not a lot of people know that i exist so if you are here guess what you are now part of a very exclusive club Ooh, fancy pants hello rosa is here hello to you as well andrew hello andrew who is this strange man with the beard oh that's me by the way yes i have been growing my beard so this is another week of my growth can you see it so my beard is getting longer and longer i'm not sure how long to have my beard i might have it very long i might go full david letterman and have a very big bushy beard perhaps i will look like father christmas so we will see what happens someone said mr duncan you are going to look like chris christopherson <laughs> i'm not sure if that is an insult or a compliment to be honest i'm not sure i haven't really worked out talking of famous people fame is what we are talking about today being famous i suppose one question i could ask before we carry on Here's a good question, if I can find it. <laughs> Have you ever met a famous person? Have you ever met a celebrity? Now, can I just say that I don't count? I do not count as a celebrity. I'm not a celebrity. <laughs> so please don't say me because I'm not a celebrity. I'm not famous. But have you met someone who is famous have you ever met a famous person in my life i have met a few famous people maybe some of the people that i've met perhaps you've never heard of but i have met in the past some famous people i might mention later on who i've met but i've met one or two big celebrities 
big famous people yes in the past <laughs> hello Haydar Haydar asks mr. Duncan what do you think about the famous currency called Bitcoin can I just say I don't fully understand Bitcoin the only thing I know about Bitcoin is that last year and also the year before the price of computer memory and also graphics cards for computers went very high in price because lots of people were using these computer parts to trade in bitcoins so that's the only thing i know about bitcoins i don't know anything else new win tran hello new win tran nice to see you here today have you ever met a celebrity have you ever walked down the street and have you ever met a celebrity maybe by chance i remember many years ago now this is something i'm going to mention briefly i remember going to the shops near my house going back many years and around the corner from my house near the shops there was a person who appeared in a television series and he was there just walking around and he came up to me <laughs> this is not a word of a lie he came up and asked if I knew where the nearest betting shop was so if you want to gamble on the horses or maybe a football match there are places you can go to to do that so he was wandering around and he came up and he said hello mate could you tell me do you know where there are any betting shops around here and I was quite shocked because I knew who he was he was off the telly but I didn't expect to see someone off the television around the corner from my house it was a very weird moment of time Bill Dean was his name Bill Dean so you can look him up on Wikipedia sadly no longer with us but many years ago I did meet him by chance around the corner from my house very very surreal moment so it is possible to actually meet a famous pe person a famous individual without even knowing it or maybe something you weren't planning to do you see it can happen sometimes hello to Sergio Sergio is here as well nice to see you we also have oh we have the sentence game coming up today if we have time if mr. Steve doesn't talk too much every week it happens I always say to mr. Steve mr. Steve you have to speak less you have to keep your sentences shorter but you know what mr. Steve is like all the time mr. Steve can't stop talking so hopefully we will have time to play the sentence game have you ever met oh fly Audi hello fly fly Audi says I met Richard Gere when I was young really well he was quite a heartthrob in the 1980s and 1990s Richard Gere I remember Richard Gere in an officer and a gentleman that very famous scene at the end when he picks his beautiful girlfriend up he carries her through the factory and out of the door and all of the girls all of the other girls in the factory are so jealous and envious because she has Richard Gere can you believe it I wonder if the hamster was there hello Khan new in hello also to jo J J J J Jose or Jose is it Jose or Jose I hope I pronounced it right hello also Nessar wow so many people are here today thank you very much for joining me <laughs> a lot of people saying I met a celebrity called mr. Duncan I'm not a celebrity I think I might have a t-shirt printed I'm going to have a t-shirt printed and it's going to say I'm not a celebrity because I'm not I'm not there are many very famous celebrities here on YouTube but I I am not one of them 
have you ever met anyone famous i wonder if mr steve has ever met anyone famous we are talking about fame i'm going to have a little break i'm going to show you an excerpt just to get you in the mood i'm going to show you an excerpt from one of my english lessons where i talk all about fame and being a celebrity Ooh. and also coming up later on we are going into the kitchen to make something very nice ah so don't go away stay tuned hi everybody this is mr duncan in england how are you today are you okay i hope so are you happy i hope so in today's lesson we are going to take a look at something that seems to take up so much of our attention these days in this lesson we are going to take a look at fame and being a celebrity The word famous is an adjective that means publicly known, easily recognizable, prominent, well known, celebrated, eminent, in the public eye. We use the word fame to state that a thing is famous. So fame is a noun and famous is an adjective. We can also describe a person who is famous as a star. The word is often prefixed with the thing they are famous for doing or the field that they are in. Music star, football star, TV star, movie star, pop star. A famous person can be described as a star, personality or as a celebrity. More often than not, the word celebrity is used especially when describing an event where famous people will be seen. A celebrity dinner or a celebrity gala. The word glitzy can also be used, which describes an event where many famous people will be. It is possible to be famous for anything fame is often achieved for doing something positive normally a famous person will have some sort of outstanding talent or ability of course it is also possible to be famous for a negative reason being well known for doing something bad is a kind of fame but in this case we will often describe them as infamous someone who has gone down in history for doing something despicable and barbaric will more often than not be described as being infamous of course there are many drawbacks and disadvantages of being famous one of the biggest problems comes with the loss of privacy many celebrities find that their privacy is often invaded which can create a lot of stress and anxiety for those on the receiving end Newspaper journalists and photographers will often try to interview and photograph as many celebrities as possible. The people doing this are often referred to as paparazzi. The paparazzi will follow and sometimes chase celebrities for that exclusive picture. So being a celebrity is not always glamorous or fun or pleasurable. There are many downsides to being famous. It would appear that nowadays everyone wants to become famous. Everywhere you look, there are opportunities being offered to those who want to hit the big time and become famous in their own right. Of course, in reality, most people would rather stay out of the public gaze. They would rather stay anonymous and unknown. The pressure that comes with being famous is not easy to handle. There are many cases where a person suffers because of their fame. They cannot handle the pressure. 
they feel overwhelmed by the attention they get unfortunately once you've become famous it often takes a long time to adjust to the new lifestyle some enjoy being in the limelight and handle the attention well while others crack up under the pressure leading them to take drastic measures to keep going the pressure to perform well or to keep that energy going can lead a person to find ways in which to stay on top drink and drugs tend to be the quick fix solutions to these fame related problems well there it was some excerpts from one of my lessons all about fame and yes if you look underneath this video you will find the link to the whole video can you believe it it is there yes here we go yes it's english addict it's now half past two and i think we know what that means don't we I don't know why I love throwing Mr. Steve when I throw Mr. Steve it means I ask him to do something that he wasn't prepared for so I'm sorry about that Steve yes here he is it's Mr. Steve would you like a round of applause here he, here we go then <laughs> hello <laughs> it is Mr. Steve c'est moi how are you Mr. Duncan how am I I'm super duper not too bad as I explained earlier I had a great sleep last night even though I had a very strange dream about cows and zebras at the back of yes. the house very strange mm. dream I don't know what that was all about anyway we have a lot to get through today we're talking about fame celebrity we're going to also go into the kitchen we are going to take a look at something that we recorded last night Mr. Steve was making something in the kitchen and we will be going in there to take a look in around about 15 minutes from now so yes that's what we're doing we're talking about fame celebrity we have the sentence game coming up as well we also have the live chat hello to the live chat Ooh, I like the live chat hello to everybody hello 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 I've been very busy Mr. Duncan as you know Valentin I saw you filming me oh yes another thing we need to clear up <laughs> Steve what what were you doing outside so this is Mr. Steve this is what he was doing earlier about an hour ago yes so there is Steve there I am yes now, well Steve what are you doing I'm replacing the old guttering so the guttering what is guttering the guttering as you can see there's guttering there uh, just behind me so guttering is a uh, plastic uh, that uh, takes the water off the edge of your roof and stops it pouring down in an uncontrolled way and takes it away down the side and into the drain you know one of the worst things you can have is dripping water especially at night when you're asleep so those pieces of black plastic you can see are actually there to prevent the water from spilling over the edge of the roof and going everywhere else thus causing not only damage but also a horrible noise as well so it looks as if oh you're repairing this are you Steve no I'm taking the old you see you can see where that box is well you are eventually going to repair it underneath that box is the old guttering because it had cracked yeah. uh, and I couldn't I couldn't repair it it was beyond repair mm. so um, I had some guttering that was left over from we had some work done to the house earlier okay. this year and there was some guttering left over so I thought oh I'll keep that and I'll use it because I know I need to replace that little bit of guttering uh, that's just above the garage roof there um, so yes I can turn my hand to anything Mr Duncan yes so, so <laughs> have you finished it I finished it really I finished it literally half an hour before no 20 minutes before this live stream started yeah I finished it 
And uh, I don't know whether it's working. It is actually raining okay. outside. I got a bit wet. So we will see. Uh, if, if I go up the stairs to the bedroom later and I'm walking through water, then, then I will know that you've got it wrong. <laughs> and I had to replace the old brackets because guttering now is different. It's slightly bigger than it was when our house was built in the late 60s. Yes. So it wouldn't fit on the old brackets. I had to replace the brackets as well. Uh, apparently rain has got larger. The, apparently the raindrops are much larger now than they used to be. Probably what it is, is when this house was built in the late 60s, yeah. we were using imperial measurements. Oh, OK. So that's sort of British measurements. Yes. Uh, and I would, I would imagine now that the guttering is is European standards yes. and it's slightly bigger yes. so it doesn't fit the old brackets so I had to replace the brackets as well but hopefully we won't get any more drips okay. and any more leaks which will w won't ruin the flat roof below yes talking of drips yes it's Mr Steve here today and also oh. Mr Duncan in fact two drips call me a drip Mr Duncan well I just called myself one as well so it doesn't really matter does if it you call someone a drip it means that they're a bit silly, a bit stupid. Of course, a lot of people were excited last night. A lot of people celebrating, a lot of cheers in the street. A lot of people yes. waving their arms because, yes, Mr. Steve was cooking in the kitchen. Oh. So yesterday was a very special day because we decided yesterday, last night, in fact, we decided to go into the kitchen. We will be doing that in a few moments. So yesterday was a very special day and uh, something else happened yesterday as well. Something, what, what was it? I'm what, sure people have been uh, mentioning that something in America, was it? Something in America, that place, oh, have you yeah. heard of America? They call it the United States. Something was happening there. Mm. I'm not quite sure what it was. Yeah, no. I've heard it was quite big. Yeah, they haven't really been talking about it very much on the news, have they? Yeah, they've hardly mentioned it. Well, of course they have. We know what's happened in America, don't we? Surprise. Well, it's quite a big surprise, I think, in a way. Yes. Uh, well, anyway, are we going to talk about it or not? Well, that's it. We, we, we have talked about it. <laughs> have you already spoken about it before I came on? No, I don't want to talk too much about it because not okay. everyone is interested in politics. And to be honest with you, if I was brutally honest, I'm not all that interested at the moment because for the past few weeks, it's all we've been hearing about, even here in England. So it isn't even our country. It's nothing to do with us. And yet our news services, the media here in England, have been talking nonstop about it. So that well, of course, we are closely aligned to the USA. <laughs> Always have been. They, they say we've got a special relationship. Yeah. Do you remember that special relationship where we had our asses kicked when they kicked us out of the country? Yes, that's a very special relationship. When was that? That's like, sorry. Who kicked who out that, of what that, country? That, that little event called the American Civil War. Oh, yeah, but I mean, since then, obviously when, when we've been they, getting on since then. When yes. they, they booted the British out and everything went a little I'm bit... I'm talking about the since, since the war, really, we've had this special... We always talk about this special relationship. Yeah. Politicians here uh, and in America talk about this special relationship. Well, we will uh, see. we will see if the sparkle comes back to the relationship anything going on on the live stream uh not really oh mr duncan <laughs> you are mr duncan you look very handsome see i saw that and you ignored it i don't like it do you see that did you see what happened then steve ignored the compliment for me yes i'm, go I'm going to keep a very close eye on this live chat today just to make sure so we have celebrities we have fame we have words connected to it also, here's something, Steve. Have you ever met a famous person? Have you ever met a famous celebrity, maybe a, an actor? Because, you know, you've done a little bit of acting in your life. Anyone I famous? No, I don't think I've... I don't think I ever have met anybody famous. I've seen somebody famous. I saw Tom Jones, the singer, <laughs> okay. once in an airport. He passed by me. Yes. And uh, went straight into the first class section yes. of the uh, the customs. Well, I happen to know that uh, Tom Jones, Tom Jones, the famous Welsh singer, has told many of his friends that he's met you. So he often talks oh, about it. He oh. says, "I remember. I, I I remember. I can't do. I can't do a Tom Jones impression." 
expert. He said, "Yeah, I saw Mr. Steve going through an airport many years ago. He was much younger then, but then again, so was Tom Jones. I've met someone famous. You've met lots of famous people, haven't you? Mr. I have. Duncan? Here's here's one famous person that I've I've actually met. Close your eyes. Okay, I'm going to do something. Don't don't panic. OK, so there is someone I've met. Can you guess who it is? Can I open my eyes, Mr. Duncan? We, we can open them. It won't help you. Oh, I can't see anything. OK, then. Who can, am I, Mr. Duncan? Yeah, who are you? Can you guess who it is? I can. Is it something you've just pulled off the wall over there, Mr. Duncan? Well, it might be, but because can you guess? It, it is a celebrity who I think looks very similar to Mr. Steve. Has he been in Die Hard? He has. Uh, OK, then. Well, we all know who it is then, don't we, Mr. Duncan? So who, <laughs> so who is it? I can't remember his name. <laughs> I see. But uh, if you're saying I look like this person, then I'm flattered in a way because he's a bit of a hunk. You know, I, I didn't mean to do that, Steve. I, I thought you would know his name. You know what I'm like with names. I can't, I'm very bad at remembering people's names. Yes. And uh, can I take this off, Mr. Duncan? Wait, have a look? You have to be very careful because I'm using very strong sticky tape. You know what it's like. Do you ever watch those dramas or horror films where a person has tape over their mouth? Ooh, and there's horrible. All, and there's always a scene where they pull off the tape very quickly. It makes a sort of noise when they tear it off. So I don't want to do that to you, Steve. So I will gently... <laughs> yeah, do it gently. It is so tempting. Shall I do it myself? It is so tempting to because... pull... Because... <laughs> oh. Ow. Sorry. You're taking the top layer of skin off, Mr. Duncan. Oh, my gosh. What are you doing? <laughs> it was the person you couldn't name. I can't remember his name. Has anybody got the name? Yes, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Thank you very much. So I have met Bruce and Willis. You. I've met Bruce Willis. Can you believe it? Have you? And he's met me. Well, what did you say to him? I said, hello, Bruce. I said... Look, can I just say that you've made some really good movies, but you've also made some terrible movies as well. Some of your movies have been really rubbish. He didn't mind, though, because I think I think he's a big, a big celebrity and I think he's used to criticism. Maybe he gets a lot of criticism. So I said, I loved you in Die Hard, but uh, there are there are Hudson Hawk. You were really terrible in that one of your worst movies but he didn't mind he said that no that's okay that's a fair point Hudson Hawk was a terrible movie but they did pay me eight million dollars to appear in it you so mean me so so who is who really is the loser yeah, so that told me <laughs> never heard of that film Mr Duncan yes <laughs> most people haven't heard of it well, Vitas says it's probably a big tragedy in Russia that Trump didn't win oh okay uh, probably is. <laughs> OK, yes. Anyway, anyway. We're not talking about politics. We're not talking about politics. We're certainly not no. going to talk about... Like to. We're not going to talk about the US election because everyone's talking about it. So we are, we are being different. We are moving away from the mainstream. But have we got anything else to talk about? Yes, we've got loads of things. Good. We're going. We're going into the kitchen in a few moments. We are going into the kitchen because last night Mr Steve decided to bake something you see ah there is a clue in what i just said and then after that we will come back and then we will probably talk about celebrity words and also we will play the sentence game later on oh i look forward to the sentence game so don't go away still lots of things to come your way today and we will be going into the kitchen in a few moments i've met Lots of famous people. I told the story a few moments ago about the the actor from television who I saw by my house. He was wandering around. By your house? Yes. I'm, I've told you this story. Well, I can't remember. Oh, I see. Yes. Very weird moment of time. So what about you out there in YouTube land? Have you ever met a famous person? Maybe you've met one of the members of BTS. Ooh. Who? BTS. BTS. What's that? We are talking K-pop. 
k-pop steve oh is that uh, korea korean pop music yeah korean pop music ah. so yes maybe you've met oh one. i have met a fame we we met a, a star didn't we and we thought we met a famous k-pop star last year when we were in uh, paris okay going up in the lift if you remember oh yes there was someone mm. staying at the hotel yes that we were staying at in paris last year and we thought he may have been famous because he was dressed like a celebrity but also he had people with him didn't he he had people with mm. him he was very young mm. good looking i would oh. say and they were going to the very top floor yes they were going all the way up to the all the way up to the top the penthouse and you said afterwards i bet he's a k-pop star yes it was very hard to tell i wanted to yes. say hello to him but i he i think he would have been embarrassed and he was with some other people as well and they they were quite big and and maybe they would i don't know break my arm or something bts it sounds like a disease behind the scenes that's what it means Behind oh, the scenes. Behind the scenes. So it, it's a, a very famous group. There, there are many K-pop groups, but BTS at the moment are very big here in England. Can you believe it? A lot of people love K-pop. Well, we've got a fan of, of, of BTS here. Yes, Khan. Khan Yuin loves K-pop and BTS, you see. Here we go then, Steve. Are you ready to play? <laughs> well, not play. <laughs> That was the wrong word, you see. I meant to use another word there, Steve. Can you guess what word it was? Watch. Yes. Well done. You see, I'm paying attention. So you might not be able to remember the name of Bruce Willis, but you, you definitely know what I meant to say then. You sort of given a clue when you said that you were going to, uh, in 15 minutes, put on a video. Yes. OK, here we go then. This will take around about 15 minutes as well can you believe it well in 15 minutes you watch this you could actually cook the things that i'm actually <laughs> demonstrating so we are going to do some baking right now right. And, then, and then we will be back at around about three o'clock and we will continue but enjoy as we go into the kitchen to see what is cooking right. hi everybody welcome to mr duncan's kitchen on a Saturday night and guess what Mr. Steve is going to show us how to make his magic scones. The only problem is we are missing one important ingredient and that is Mr. Steve. Come on Mr. Steve. <laughs> hello, hello. Here he is. <laughs> Here I am. This <laughs> normally is an English teaching channel but today it's a cookery channel so you can learn how to make scones or scones and learn some new English words as well so without any more messing about let's get on with it shall we I'm ready Mr Duncan I have all my ingredients laid out here on this rather small area that I'm going to make these scones on so right the most important thing is this uh, uh, weighing device <laughs> scales uh, and I use the old-fashioned uh, non-electronic ones I've had these since I was about 20 right so first ingredient of course I've got my cookery book here this is a very big uh, the good housekeeping guide or if Mr Duncan wants to put it on <laughs> good housekeeping book I've had this again my mother bought this for me when I was about 18 when I left home and it's got everything in here you could possibly want to cook. So on page 378 it tells me how to make scones. So the first thing is I want 8 ounces of self-raising flour. So we're going to weigh this. Here we go. 8 full ounces. It's self-raising of course because we want the scones to rise in the oven so that they're nice and delicate and spongy and nice to eat. So we also want to make it rise even more, so we add some baking powder, so it just helps it to rise a bit more. So how much do we want, Mr Duncan? Baking powder, we want one level teaspoon. Now, here is my magic spoons. Uh, they have all the, uh, the different measurements that you might need in cookery. 
So, uh, what did I say? Half a teaspoon or a whole teaspoon, Mr. Duncan? You're the chef. What does it say? Let's check again. One level teaspoon baking powder. There we go. Uh, we also want some salt. We want half a teaspoon of salt, it's which sounds odd for cakes. Let's just, uh, I don't know why we put salt in. I think it's because that's just a flavour. So we need to sieve everything to make sure there aren't any lumps. And it also helps to mix the ingredients. Plus, I just like sieving. Sieve. This is a sieve. So it uh, takes out all the lumps and also creates... My goodness. A big cloud of... <laughs> flour at the same time. I'll put this over here. There we go. So I'll give it a bit of a mix. I'll give it a bit of a mix, Mr. Duncan, just to make sure that all those other ingredients are mixed up. Uh, now, they always say you want cool hands for baking, uh, because if your hands are sticky and hot, everything gets sticky. Right, now we've got to add some fat to this, Mr. Duncan. How much do we need? We want one to two ounces of butter which uh, is 25 to 50 grams. Uh, eight ounces of flour, by the way, is 225 grams of flour. So I'm going to add two ounces because I can, and two ounces will make it just a little bit more rich than it otherwise would have been. In fact, I might just add a little bit more. <laughs> there we go, two ounces of fat. Any old fat will do. So we put the, the fat into there with the flour and then we've got to mix it all up. I like this bit. So you sort of squash the flour with the fat and eventually it all sort of combines together. Now I should be using a bigger bowl really. Can you describe this as kneading? No, this isn't kneading yet. This is just sort of mixing. You're just blending the fat with the flour and what happens is it, it turns into sort of breadcrumbs. It's quite magic the way it happens. Uh, and of course we need to get it nice and evenly mixed up. Here we go. Make sure it's all blended in. I'm not really using the correct bowl. You normally use a bigger bowl but I haven't got one because I broke it. It's only recently that I've started actually baking again. Now, can you see what's happened here, Mr. Duncan? Mm -hmm. All the flour has blended with the fat, and we've got sort of breadcrumbs, a breadcrumby effect. Yes, it's quite magic, isn't it? So I can't believe that this will eventually become scones. Well, it will, and I'm just, I can feel the odd little bit of fat here, so I'm just trying to blend it in to make sure it's all correctly done because we don't want any sort of lumps of unblended fat. Uh, right, my mother always used to say you want cool hands for making cakes. Right, there we go. It's always messy doing this. Don't expect this to be not messy. We're all old clothes. Now, we need to add some milk. We want a quarter of a pint of milk or 150 mils. Now, don't add it all in at once because this is quite important because we don't want the mixture to become sticky. We want it to go into a consistency that's a bit like bread dough. So I'm going to add a quarter of a pint of milk, but we're not going to put it all in. Uh, we're going to leave some of it out because we don't want it to get sticky because we won't be able to turn it into nice shapes. If it does go too sticky, then uh, we can just add some more flour to it. I'm going to get in there with my hands because there's nothing more satisfying than uh, kneading a bit of dough. That's perfect, Mr. Duncan. We just want it like that so that we can just... It doesn't stick to our hands. If it sticks to your hands, add more flour, but it's best to add less than they suggest. Right, so, next stage, Mr. Duncan, is that I like fruit scones. Here's the fruit. Raisins, there we go. Okay. Uh, I like raisins, I like sweet scones, but Mr. Duncan wants cheese in his. Oh yes. There we go. So there's some cheese that I grated. One of the things I've noticed, Steve, is if you grate cheese, it becomes more, much easier to handle. You can, ha you can handle it much easier. Right, so because Mr. Duncan wants cheese in his, I'm going to split this in half. 
uh, and then I'm going to um, make the cheese ones with one half. So I'll approximately cut it in half like that. I'll just see whether they are the same. Eight ounces. Eight ounces. So that's Mr. Duncan. So these are approximately the same. And now I'm going to put cheese in. Uh, we probably should have done this before, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we can do it afterwards. So there in goes the cheese. And then I'm just going to sort of mash it in there. Mm. So you're mixing the cheese into the dough? Yes. But probably, if I wasn't splitting this into two lots, I would have probably added the cheese in at, when I was mixing it in earlier. But because Mr. Duncan's awkward and he wants cheese, I do. Then I'm going to I'm going to mix it in now. I love cheese. And it doesn't really matter because we've got the perfect consistency for the dough here. It's not sticking to my fingers. So we blend the cheese in there. You can add all sorts of things to this. Uh, you might be interested to note that I haven't added any sugar to this because you don't have to for scones. Right. There's Mr. Duncan's. That's ready. We're not going to overdo it. The secret with cooking, you don't overdo it. Now I'm going to split it into three. I'm going to roll it a bit and I'm going to split it into three scones for Mr. Duncan. Yeah! Uh, because he's important. So there we go. Well, I do know I might be able to get more than three. I'll do three because that'll be quite nice. There we go. They're going to be very big scones. They are going to be very big scones. Now, all I'm going to do is roll them like that. Uh, I'm not going to mess around with them. And put them onto uh, a baking sheet, which has some flour on because I don't want it to stick. We don't need to be fussy with this. You can get proper things for cutting out nice shapes, but we're not going to bother. We're just going to shove them onto the baking tray like that. And then here's mine. I don't want cheese in mine. So we want raisins in mind, so I'm just going to add a handful of raisins, that'll do. We don't, we, we don't have to measure it. Just a few. So I'm going to just blend that in. Lovely. Like I did with the cheese. And out of one mixture I've got two different types of scone, which is I think that's very clever of me, don't you Mr. I think Duncan? that's very, not only clever but also resourceful. Yes. It shouldn't really handle this very much because uh, it can affect the way it rises. Now I'm going to get three scones out of this as well. So, there we go. one, two, that's about right. One. There we go. Don't need to be too precise with it. Roll it up. Stick it on the tr on the baking tray. That's ready to go in the oven. One more thing to do. We're just going to uh, glaze. We're going to put some milk on the top, which just, when they bake, it gives it a nice colour. You can use egg mixture for this, which makes it look a bit better. It just gives it a nice colour when it's cooked. It makes them look brown. Egg, egg works better, but you waste a whole egg just to, to, just to do this. Right. One baking tray into a hot oven. So, so now we're going to put these into the oven. Here we go. Oh, can you see what I've already got in there, Mr. Duncan? Mr. Steve has, uh, Mr. Steve, you have something else. I have our tea cooking in there already, which is chili con carne. Oh, I see. So the oven's already on, so <laughs> I'm not wasting electricity by just putting it on to cook the scones. I've got the chili in the bottom, Scones in the top right now. We've got to time this, Mr. Duncan. There we go. We'll start that. Okay. It's done, Mr. Duncan. The scones are in the oven. <laughs> what we're going to do, we're going to have a little break and then we're going to come back to see if the chili con carne and also the scones have cooked as they should. And then we'll eat them tomorrow live. We, we, will, we will have one of the scones <laughs> on the live stream. Okay, does that sound like a good idea? Okay, see you in a few moments.
They're ready, Mr. Duncan. Switch that off. Yes. Okay, Mr. Duncan, they're coming out of the oven. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. And I shall put them on this cooling rack. There we go. Oh my goodness. Voila. Look at those. Now they are the most amazing scones that I've ever seen. Um, I had to put them in for 15 minutes uh, because they hadn't really browned off. Okay. Yours have browned off more than mine. Your, there's, these are the cheese ones here. And these are obviously the fruit ones here. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yours are browned off more because I think it's because they've got cheese in them. Mm. But uh, they will be done. Yeah. I think it's safe to say that we have success. One thing worth mentioning, if something is browned off, it can also mean annoyed. Or if you are sick and tired of something. Something can make you feel annoyed. You are, you are, you've had enough of it. You are feeling down. You are feeling depressed. You are feeling browned off. Anyway, that's it, Steve. Let's go, shall we? Yes, I often feel browned off with Mr. Duncan around. That's nice. Do you like my gloves? They're all warm and toasty. Steve's got his oven gloves. <laughs> they are very warm. Right, we're off to cook the rest of tonight's meal and tomorrow we'll eat the, the scones. Yes, on, on the live stream tomorrow we are going to eat one of these scones each. I will have a cheese one and Mr. Steve will have one of the fruit scones. And that's it. I will return you back live to the studio. Do, 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 do. I hope you enjoyed that. We enjoyed doing that. We enjoyed doing that, didn't we, Steve? We did, yes, and we, uh, we, we're we also going to enjoy eating them. Uh, As promised. Mog says that uh, they like chocolate scones. Ah. And also, even though it's 12 o'clock there, they want to eat a scone now. <laughs> I think we've made people a bit hungry. Can, um, I, can I just say, I've never heard of chocolate scones or chocolate scones. Well, you did mention it the other night. I, yes. could, I might try that. Marietta says, is it cheddar cheese? Yes. Yes. Very strong cheddar cheese. Organic. Organic, no mm. less. Ooh. No pesticides <laughs> in our cheese. Fancy, <laughs> fancy pants. So, yes, yeah, so it's quite a strong, typical British cheese, but mm. you could you could add any sort of hard cheese into it, really. Mm. Just like me, it's extra mature. Well, you look like it with that beard, Mr Duncan. Thank you. If you say you're mature... It means that you're uh, you're you're quite sensible, grown up, probably <laughs> older, but uh, you can be mature for your age. So you could you could be quite sensible and have a very wide perspective on life, and be quite knowledgeable and and think in a very rational way and a measured way. Mature. If there is one thing I'm not, it's mature. And uh, Anna likes to put olive oil in her cooking. Yes, Ooh. I put olive oil in the when I was frying the onions for the chili. Okay. And I might try olive oil actually in the scones next time. Yeah. That's well, a good I, I, idea. I think that would give it a nice flavour as well. I'm just wondering whether it would make them a bit too soft though, because the they, they won't they might not set as well. But I'll, I'm going to try it. Uh, and I've written something down here that Andrew said, but I can't read what I said. Oh, Andrew said, yes, why don't you nibble on the ingredients? Yes. Well, that's what we used to do when my mother used to be cooking cakes. Mm. Whatever was left over in the bowl, <gasps> you'd, you'd be licking it, wouldn't you, and, and, and tasting it. Mm. Uh, but, of course, that's actually quite dangerous because what happens if the eggs, are, if there was eggs in a cake mixture, for example, and the eggs had got... Well, poisonous or something yeah, that's it or maybe the eggs had gone rotten rotten they say then, you shouldn't and, do that and then though. you're putting that into your mouth you might get salmonella or you might have diarrhea for a week Ooh. Uh, gordon ramsay wants to know our location by the way oh i see yes apparently according to sergio sergio says gordon ramsay must be very jealous I, i'm not actually sure if you're being sarcastic there i can't anyway 
Anyway, enough of that because His look, tummy is rumbling. Here they are. So here are some little slices. This is my cheese scone, and there is Mr. Steve's fruit scone. There is some fruit in there. Mr. Steve is a little bit of a fruity person, and I am rather cheesy, especially my jokes. So for the third week in a row, we're going to eat a scone live. <laughs> this has become mm. this has become a regular thing now. We we do it every week. So here we go. This is actually the scone that we baked last night. That's Mr. Steve's, and this is mine. But what does it taste like? Mm. Mm. C'est magnifique. Monsieur Duncan. Oh my goodness. Mm. Well, as you can see, you shouldn't talk with your mouth. You should never talk with your mouth full. Mm. Mm. It is so tempting. My mother always used to say, mm. never talk with your mouth full. It's rude. And we're breaking that rule, Mr. Duncan, mm. to all your viewers around the world. You are not supposed to eat during your live stream. But well, we have. What's it like, Mr. Duncan? Is it fantastic? Marks yeah. out of 10, please. 11. Oh, 11. <laughs> what shall I do next? Shall I make some more scones or shall I go and put some more guttering up? Or shall I mow the grass or shall I cut a tree down? Or shall I do some brain surgery? Is there anything you can't do? No. <laughs> I'm only joking. We can all do a bit of everything, mm. um, can't <laughs> we? I mean, I can put guttering up. I'm sure I. I'm sure a professional, a builder, would have done a better job than me. Mm. Uh, but uh, you don't need tremendous amount of skills to put guttering up. Um, but you, you just got to have a go and start. I think sometimes. I think since this this is one thing that the lockdown. Yeah. I was trying to get through today without mentioning it. The lockdown has has made us and made me certainly develop new skills mm. because I'm at home. And so I've learned how to sort of relay slabs and do grouting and build a wall. I've learned some guttering. I've learned how to bake again. So all these things. So there is always some positive out of something that's bad. So yes. the lockdown obviously is is a very negative thing, hmm. but if you can use that time to develop new skills, then you, it's going to make yourself feel better. It's going to make you feel as though you've educated yourself, achieved hmm. something, done something yes. different. Instead of dwelling on all of the bad things, instead of getting all depressed, you can find something to do, something maybe you've never tried before. Perhaps you can try to make some scones. By the way, you might notice also in the video that I just played, <laughs> you will notice that the recipe is actually there. <laughs> what? This is the. T <laughs> What's wrong there? Uh, Jimmy says you need a mirror, Mr. Duncan. Do I? Yes, because. <laughs> I would love to have a mirror, but the every every time I look in the mirror, you need to wipe your face, Mr. Duncan. Use this rag. Can you do it for me? Yes. Oh. He's got oh disgusting that's the trouble with beards you get food stuck in them you get sort of, i don't like it i think it's horrible you can get birds nesting in your beard I think they're dirty i don't like them it's fashionable at the moment but i don't like them i'm uh, not i'm not doing it for fashion i'm just too lazy to shave to be honest it's much easier when you've got a beard you don't have to spend so much time getting ready. You look like Wally Warris while you were chewing, says I've, the Raphael. I have no idea. I don't know who Wally Warris is. By the way, talking of my appearance, my socks today are extra special. Look at my socks. Ooh. Spots. I have got my turquoise socks. So the colour is turquoise with a little bit of orange over the toes. Also, we have a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, a little bit of white and Mr. Steve's favourite, a little bit of black. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and yes, I am wearing my pyjama trousers, my pyjamas. I'm wearing my pyjamas. <laughs> you can't see them, but I'm definitely wearing my pyjamas at the moment. At the moment. 
Uh, Lol is asking us to write the ingredients below the video. Mm. Uh, oh, I think we did that last week, didn't we? Uh, if you pause the video, if you rewatch it and pause it, mm. you will very cleanly, uh, very clearly see all the ingredients. Yes, there but is. If you Google it, scones, mm -hmm. it's everywhere. They're very easy to make. Mm. Which is uh, why, which is why we can make them. <laughs> oh, right. Mm. Yes, lots of people. Uh, 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 writing about our recipes we'll have to do something else another week won't we Mr. yes Duncan? maybe next week we could show how to i don't know uh, what else do we like making what else do you like baking chili oh baking hmm. uh flapjacks yes. they're very easy yes or th there's another one called rocky road which ha has a lot of chocolate Oh yes yes that sounds good that's doesn't an it? interesting one i, I could make that one in fact i'm sure we did that before you know did we? I'm sure we've done that before in the past. Have we made a... Oh, Mr Duncan, your breath after those cheesy scones. <laughs> Do, is, uh, my, is my breath cheesy? Anyway. What are we doing, Mr Duncan? i tell you what we're doing now. We are going to talk all about celebrities, celebrity words, being a celebrity, being famous. Would you like to do that, Steve? Because there is a website that I found last week and I've become a little bit obsessed with it. There is a website. I'm not going to give you the name of the website, but if they want to give me some money, a big pile of money, if you want to push it through my letterbox to be, you know, very safe and to keep the social distance, you are more than welcome to. But there are some celebrities, some of them very big, who are now recording video messages of course, you have to pay them for the pleasure. So I thought it would be interesting <laughs> to see how much <laughs> these celebrities charge. So today we are talking all about being famous and what is the price of fame? So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to guess the price of fame. Are you ready to play, Mr. Steve? Yes. <laughs> you mean, let's, let's just go over this again. So you found a website. I found a website. Where celebrities. Famous people. Famous people. Uh, you can pay them for them to send you a, mer a message, like maybe a birthday message for a friend or yes, something like that. That's it. So you have to pay the money. However, the price that they charge varies depending right. on how famous the person is. But you might be surprised at some of the famous people that are on this website. So we're going to play a game <laughs> to called Guess the Price of Fame. You see, you can, can you see what I've done there? I've put a lot of effort. And a lot so of you're going to put up a celebrity, a okay. photograph, maybe a yeah. name. And then we've got to guess how much would it cost on this website that you've found for that celebrity mm -hmm. to uh send us a message or for us to pay for a message for a friend yes so there are some of the celebrities these are famous people now we're not right. going to look at these celebrities but these are some of the people that are on the site you might recognize you might recognize one or two people there is fake tom cruise can you see him yes i so can that, so that isn't tom cruise but it's someone who looks like tom cruise there are a couple of youtube celebrities ricky berwick have you heard of him? No. He's a big YouTube celebrity. Also, Jacob Cruikshank. Jacob Cruikshank, a very well-known celebrity. He's on this website and you can get a message from him. Are there any more famous people than this, Mr Duncan, that some of us might have heard about? Here we go then, Steve. Are you ready to see the famous people? So here is our first celebrity. So what you have to do is guess how much this person charges for their message <laughs> i know it seems strange but you have to guess what the price 
of that person it is. People are not believing that this is true, Mr. Duncan. It is true. Fly says no, it's not true. It Raphael is. says, "Give me a break." No, it's true. It's it's a real website. I was it going. Is. I was going. Yeah, you've seen the website. I've You're, seen it. It's true. It's real. So here we go. Here is our first celebrity, and you have to tell me how much they charge to send a message. So our first one quite a well-known person you might be surprised to see this Steve our first celebrity is John Cleese I cannot believe John Cleese is yeah. on this website John I'm not joking John Cleese is actually on this website and there it is that's the picture he uses for those that don't know he's a famous British comedian everyone knows an actor everyone knows John Cleese some Mon people might not Monty Python Lots of other things, faulty towers. So British humour. When we think of British humour, we often think of John Cleese. So there he is. But how much does he charge? Do you think to send a message? To how long is the message? Well, it doesn't matter. But it, okay. it has to be a couple of minutes, of course. But yes, so Tomek says two hundred uh, pounds. Two hundred pounds. Tomek. Tomek says so. If you wanted a message from John Cleese it would cost 200 pounds says Tomek uh, Nugent says uh, 90,000 dollars new win I think that's a little too much 900,000 dollars so we are going to do the prices in British pounds uh, we've got 250 pounds says Bella Bella, and is that what will the message be sort of 15 seconds something like that Long, typically uh, longer than that normally longer about that. about a minute or two minutes about a minute or two minutes so think of John Cleese he's quite a big celebrity very well known he's moved away from Britain he's now living oh there is a place called Nevis have you heard of it it's one of the little islands in the Caribbean in the Caribbean so he's gone to live there He's gone to live in the Caribbean now. But so what does he charge? We've got 250 pounds is the upper limit that people okay. are suggesting. Bella says 250. Tomek says 200. <laughs> uh, 10 pounds says Tatiana. Tatiana says with a smiley face. 10 pounds. So how much does he charge, Mr. Duncan? So here he is, a big celebrity. John Cleese, if you want to have a message, personal message from John Cleese, it will cost you 249 so look at that i i didn't know that so no. um bella you were the closest 249 pounds if you want a message from john cleese they will have to do this quickly because I think people will find this website and they will very quickly find out. Well, they won't. They won't because I haven't mentioned it. I haven't mentioned the website name. The website will have to get in touch with me and pay me a load of money. More than two hundred and forty nine pounds, let's right, say. Right. OK, well, so, yes. so there's the first one. So now you get the idea. Now, here's an interesting one. I thought we would go straight to the most or the, the highest price. So think there's a clue there. Now, this man is someone I've never heard of, but apparently he's very famous in the USA, which might mean nothing. It might mean something. So here he is. How much would it cost to get a message from Kevin O'Leary? Have you heard of him? No. Well, he's a presenter. Now, we have a TV show here in the UK called Dragon's Den. Well, imagine the American version called Shark Tank. Ah. So he is the main guy. So here we have Alan Sugar. Is it Alan Sugar? Uh, on on which on Dragon's which? Den. Oh no, there's there's various people aren't there. That's I don't it. think Alan Sugar. Well, he might it. have been on it, but yeah. anyway. a, yes, you've got a business idea mm -hmm. and you pitch it to a panel of, of of celebrities who are also business people as well and they sort of tell you whether they'll give you any money or not. So Kevin O'Leary is a businessman. Although probably not a very good businessman because he has to <laughs> sell <laughs> messages, <laughs> video messages to people. <laughs> so he might not be that <laughs> successful. We are living in strange times, says Zudzika. You're you are right. This is madness, isn't it? I mean, if you're a star, a famous star. There I am. That's if me. you're a famous star 
and you've put yourself on this website i think it's a bit i don't know i'm not going to comment but well, it's a way of making money it's a way of making money but it's a bit desperate it comes you, across as a bit desperate to me by the way if you want a message from me if you want a lovely message from me for your birthday maybe it will cost you nothing free ah. why should i pay to receive a message from these people says anna yeah exactly i wouldn't yeah. well some people might but you might you might have a friend perhaps or a family member hmm. who's a real fan yes of a particular person maybe a singer maybe an actor okay and you could surprise them for a fee by getting this celebrity that they like to send them a message yeah. imagine but i mean it's a lot of money to spend isn't it yes well it depends how much of a fan you are so i can't imagine yes. anyone wanting a message from this guy he <laughs> i don't know why but <laughs> the price you would have to pay bella says 499 pounds alessandra says it's a waste of money bella says 500 yes yes so it is yes lots of lots of uh, people saying that 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 was my initial thought mm. um what a waste of money exactly yes Tatiana says <coughs> Tatiana says sneeze <laughs> Tatiana says 666 666 666 the number of the beast yes sign yeah. of the devil here we go to uh, <laughs> okay. some texts some texts what uh, <laughs> did you receive them on your phone here we go then how much is a message from dragon's den the Dragon's Den, Kevin O'Leary. Don't think anyone's heard of him. Nobody says they've heard of him. Who apparently also goes by the name of Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> so he's also modest. Modest as well. <laughs> How much? So here we go. Kevin O'Leary, he is he is one of the people on Shark Tank, which is the American version of <laughs> Dragon's Den. If you want to have a message, it will cost you... <laughs> nine hundred and ninety six pounds nearly a thousand pounds to get a message from this guy a thousand can you believe that he must be rolling in money well he is i think he is a multi-millionaire so you would imagine that he didn't need the money to be honest with you i would imagine he doesn't need the money at all nobody got anywhere near that i'm not surprised because especially if you've never heard of him what about so what about have you got any examples of any actors that people might know well, well that's Mr. coming Duncan. up later on there are some big names you might be surprised to find out there are some very big celebrities on this website who will send you a message we've had John Cleese of course he's a big name so we've had the highest fly this is true this is true I know it's, it's unbelievable it's this is real there really is a website that you can go to and get a celebrity to pay and you can pay a celebrity to yep. send you a message if we're not making it up <laughs> it would be nice i thought mr duncan was making it up but i've seen it it's yep. true it's true it's real you won't believe the names they're on here so we've gone from the highest so now we're going to have a look at the lowest so here is the person who has the cheapest <laughs> but do we know them no well <laughs> we want somebody that we know mr duncan so this person is actually on TikTok, so there are lots right. of big famous TikTok users now. You know, look at us, down with the youth. Yeah, we're we're hip, man. We're hip. Well, we're not on TikTok. No, we're not on TikTok, but we know about TikTok. I mean, I I have my TikTok here on my wrist, but yes, there is such a thing as TikTok. So here is the TikTok celebrity, but how much can you get a message from him for? Oh, yes, we all know this guy. Do we? This is Matthew the Cat or Matt the Cat 69. And he is a TikTok creator. He's a huge, huge guy on TikTok. Do you go on TikTok, Mr. Duncan? I just said I don't. I just literally so said. How do you know that he is a famous star? Because because underneath the writing there says that he is. <laughs> so um, how much would you pay Matthew? Matt the cat. Matt the cat. <laughs> oh, Matt the cat. Yes. How much? Uh, Sixty-nine. So this is a big TikTok celebrity. He's very big on TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. 
<laughs> I'm sick of saying that word. TikTok. Is that the is that the website that they were going to ban in America? <laughs> well, I think no. Well, they're, they're, I think they've they've bought it now. Oh, they've bought it's it. It's been now. sold now. So TikTok is a Chinese site. No, not anymore. Oh, it's been, it's been sold. Though, it's right? been sold on. But it was, I mean. Yes, because because Trump. Who remembers Donald Trump? Do you remember Donald Trump? I don't he think was he's that, going anywhere. He was that guy with the big tie, the long tie. And he, he often said things like make America great again and things like that. But, but yes, I, I vaguely remember him. I, I Anyway, Matthew Matt the Cat. From is it 69 pounds says Bella 69 pounds oh I see what you've done there yes because there's 69 in his name you think you think it's 69 pounds I wonder why I put 69 because he can't he can't have been born in 1969 because he looks far too young for that I would imagine that there are other people with the name so he's had to put numbers at the end you see so it's like Tom Cruise if Tom Cruise had a Twitter mm. account but someone else already had it he would have to put Tom Cruise 2. Tatiana or says £50. £50. Here we go then. Here we go. Here's, so the price, you can get a message from Matt the Cat from TikTok. Personal message. Whatever he does. Ooh. How much will it cost if you want to do it? It will cost you... 83p. 83 pence. Not even one pound. Not even a pound. Not even one pound. So, what, Mr. Duncan? Yeah. <laughs> all I've got to say is but, you ought to go on this website. I'm sure you could get more than 83p. I think I'm worth more than 83 pence. Well, that is the question. If Mr. Duncan went on to this celebrity website, mm. <laughs> how much would anybody oh. be prepared to oh. pay Mr. Duncan you s ah, for a message? Very interesting. Maybe I could charge, you see. Maybe you could. Because I do all of this for free on YouTube. It's all for free. So poor old Matt the Cat. That's embarrassing. 83 pence. That's if embarrassing. You, if you want a message from him. <laughs> if you're on a celebrity website and everybody can see that's that's effectively saying what you're worth. Yes, well that's isn't it? That's what the name of the that's game is. That's your worth laid bare. The name of the game to see. It, the name of the game is the price of fame, literally. Well, so for, that, for, for Matt the Cat, it's not very high, is it? No. So it just goes to show what it shows is is just because you're on TikTok and lots of people know you, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are worth much. I wonder who I wonder who determines what you're worth on this website. Well, this is one of the things I want to find out. Yes. I might I might write to them and find out. I'm yes. also going to ask them if they want me to talk about it again, you see, and then they can send me lots of money. I want some of John Cleese's money. I want some of <laughs> Matt the Cat. I want some of his 83 pence. Maybe he gets thousands of. I don't know what. It, what does he do on TikTok? Do we know, Mister? No one does anything on TikTok. They oh, do right. nothing. They just dance around, and that's it. Okay. Anyway, here's another one, Steve. You are not going to believe what I'm about to show you. Will we know this person? <laughs> there are two, two individuals on this one. Okay. And you might be surprised to find out that they are not human beings. What? So this this is when it gets really weird. It gets very weird at this point because these are not human beings. They are dogs. You can actually get a message. Uh, uh, how do you do this? How do you get a message from a dog? Pet influence. You know, you really must be making this up. Mr. I Duncan. am not making this up. This is the world that we live in now in 2020. We can now go to a website and get a personal birthday message from two dogs. So presumably these are well-known dogs, are they? Uh, people well, uh, in the again who are said, interested in pets. Look, the, the the clue is there. You see, pet influencers. So apparently these <laughs> these dogs are pet influencers called Hammy and Olivia. Obviously. They have owners. I can't believe this is the world that I live in. So the owners of these two dogs have put their dogs onto this website yeah. and are going to get money. But they're well known. Well known by who? Uh, well, people who know them. <laughs> people, if you know, if you know these dogs, then you know them and maybe you want a message for your birthday. 
I, what I want to do, I want to know is how do they send the message? Do they just bark or do they just sit there and lick their bum? I don't know. Well, Palmyra says they're corgis. Oh, OK. In I'm, which case, I wonder if they're the Queen's corgis. Well, no, because all her corgis have died. Really? She doesn't have any corgis now. I she, didn't know that. The last one died a few months ago. Why doesn't she replace them with new ones? <laughs> no, they're not light bulbs. What everybody does when the dog dies, they get another one. Oh, oh, um, Charles, uh, the the corg is dead. Please fetch one another one. I would like another corgi, please, to pet. And Fifty pounds, says Sandra. Okay, so you can get a personal. I'm not making this up. A lot of people are saying I, I'm I'm making this up. This is real. This is the world that we now live in. Boys and girls. Well, how much, Mr. Duncan, to get a message? What What do they do? Do they bark? Well, that's what I've asked. I don't know. I don't know what the messages are. I, 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 I would have to pay, you see, and I'm not going to. I'm going to say five pounds. Five pounds. Okay. If it's anything more than that, this really is truly a messed up world. Here we go, then. So if you want... <laughs> <laughs> if you want a personal message from Hammy and Olivia, the famous corgis of the internet, <laughs> this is how much you will have to pay. Oh. <laughs> I give up, Mr Duncan. <laughs> the world is screwed up. We have lost it. Humanity is doomed. And I can prove it right now because you can get a personalised message from two dogs for 49 pounds i'm not sure if that's 49 pounds each but you could just <laughs> walk to the park yeah and <laughs> and just get somebody else's dog to bark at you yes. and film it but couldn't you say that about human beings you could say i don't want tom cruise i'm just going to go around the corner and get my neighbor to say hello instead people are crazy yes they are christine yeah, i'm not joking i wish i was joking it's it's very depressing that this is actually reality. This is this is what's happening now in the world. OK, you're not going to believe the next one. The next one, we have a big celebrity. Here a we big go. big celebrity. Big one coming. You are not going to believe the next celebrity. Mr. Steve, how much? Is it me? <laughs> no. How much for a personal message from the Hoff himself, David Hasselhoff? Well, he's on there. He's on the site and he will send you a personalised message. For those who don't know, David Hasselhoff was a very famous actor in the 1980s and early 90s. He appeared in Knight Rider, where he drove around a computerised car. And also later he was in Baywatch, as it says there. Baywatch, where they would always run along the beach in slow motion like this and uh, were the women running in slow motion as well the women were running in slow motion in and, their bikinis and, no and doubt. you could see everything going from side to side shimmering shimmering and wobbling all over the place so anybody so uh, how much how I, much how much for david hasselhoff hmm anybody under the age of sort of 40 will probably won't know who david david hasselhoff is well, he's he's more famous now for being famous in the past. So some people do. I don't know how they do it, but they, they continue to be famous, even though they don't do anything anymore. And David, David Hasselhoff is a good example. Another one is Peter Andre. Peter Andre is a famous singer. He had one hit in the 1980s and he's managed to get a career that that goes right up to this very day on one song <laughs> Raphael says that there is a site where guys can buy the urine oh no from a YouTube girl no that can't be true Don't but, do oh that. I believe it I believe it no you, you anything's possible look it's bad enough having David Hasselhoff on the show right how much is he charging people have said nine we're a thousand pounds says Valor yes. Olga says 50 pounds Tatiana says 99 pounds and also adds that they must be desperate for income. There was, True. Yeah. I think this really is sad. Uh, I mean, you must really want to keep your profile up. Surely David Hasselhoff, <laughs> famous actor, must have made millions of pounds, does yeah. not need to go on this site yes. to earn what? 
Mr. But, Duncan. But, but you know what happens often with celebrities? They often make lots of money and then they lose it all. They spend it all, or maybe they 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 don't pay tax, and then they have to they have to give all their money to the tax man. Bella says, "I know him, and I'm under forty. <laughs> yes, there you I go. think he gets three hundred and fifty-five pounds. Three hundred and fifty-five pounds. Bella. Let um, me guess. I would say, oh, I don't know. Maybe I, I would say a hundred and fifty hundred and forty nine hundred and forty nine for david hasselhoff is that what you think okay. i think so you might be surprised how much david hasselhoff is actually worth if you want a message from him on this website so, <laughs> mr hasselhoff how much is your message 294 oh, pounds 294 pounds is not bad you see so there is some value there David Hasselhoff still has value even to this very day. So £249 will get you a message. Happy birthday from <laughs> David Hasselhoff. That must be a relief for David Hasselhoff that he's earning more than the TikTok. <laughs> yes, <laughs> at least it's not 85p. That's the time to worry. Yes. But can you believe it, Steve? We have even bigger celebrities. How long are we going to be doing this for, Mr Duncan? <laughs> Maybe for the next two hours. <laughs> it is fascinating, but yeah. I think it's got a limit. No, it has only to you. So don't don't forget there are people out there who are probably fascinated by this. Are you fascinated? Are you as fascinated as I was? Mr Duncan's been spending all weekend looking at this website. Here's the next one. So as I said earlier, there are famous people and there are also people pretending to be famous people because they look like them so the next one is a famous person a movie star but it's not him it is an impersonator of robert de niro so he's called this guy is called robert de niro guy and he's an impersonator of robert de niro and i must say he does look like him is robert de niro on this website as well no he isn't could, could, could you imagine that? So I was going to say, yes, <laughs> that would be interesting if Robert De Niro was on there. And also Robert De Niro, the impersonator, was on there as well. Mm. I would imagine if if they I imagine they haven't managed to persuade Robert De Niro to go onto their website. So they've got an impersonator. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so this guy who is not Robert De Niro but he's a guy who pretends to be. And he is charging for messages, even though he's not Robert De Niro. Yeah, so it's a little confusing. So he could, I suppose he could charge anything when you think about it, because I think he does look like him. He really does look like Robert mm. De Niro. Wh whether he sounds like him, I don't know. He might have a Birmingham accent. So, a yo looking at me? A yo looking at me? So well, there's, somebody... there's nobody else here. Yeah, I'm looking at me. So I'm guessing Tom Cruise isn't on there, which is why we saw earlier there was somebody called not Tom C Cruise, yes. who was a Tom Cruise impersonator. Yes. But he's charging for a message, even though he's not actually Tom Cruise. Yes. And this person isn't actually Robert De Niro. <laughs> and in this screwed up world, yes. he can charge for a message. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I could I could do it and say I'm Mr. Duncan, but I, I really am Mr. Duncan. Perhaps there's somebody called on this website who uh, is a mr duncan impersonator yeah, maybe and is charging to send messages to people yeah maybe he's impersonating me there's a person on here who's pretending to be me saying hello everybody my name's mr duncan and i like to talk in english but it's not you see it's me i'm the real mr duncan i'm the real one the genuine now with <laughs> well then can we tell now with super duper santa claus beard maria says do they send a video message yes yes, yes. and yes. you can also for some of these celebrities you can have live conversations with them for extra money yes of course <laughs> not for 85p it's a little bit more than that but yes you can have live conversations john cleese for example you can actually have a live chat with john cleese and pay so how much does somebody pretending to be Robert De Niro charge, Mr. Duncan? Here we go then. So if you want to talk to fake Robert De Niro or have a message from him, <laughs> the price is... <laughs> go on, punk, make my day. Oh, hang on, that's the wrong one. 
that's not that's Clint Eastwood isn't it but how much are you worth fake Robert De Niro <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's 73 very... pounds 87 <laughs> pence that's very precise yes what what's the 87 pence for i don't know <laughs> maybe but, that's his uh, maybe people the... actually have been i'm trying to get my jokes out maybe that's for his taxi you see see what he did there because it... uh, okay why do i bother so yeah a lot of people were saying 255 355 pounds 399 pounds so uh Yes, the impersonator isn't worth as much as you think. So you and people are beginning to say, can we have some proper English lessons, Mr. Duncan? Well, this is a proper English lesson. <laughs> I think this is interesting. We've only got 20 minutes. That's all right. We've got loads of time. I spent all night doing this, making these. Uh... <laughs> That's cheap, says Bella. Yes. G giving these. Yes, you can have for 74 pence, shy of 13p, you can have. Robert De Niro. Well, if you got one a week. Well, a fake Robert De Niro. If you got one of those a week, uh, that's two hundred, nearly three hundred pounds a month. Okay, here's here's Not one for bad. me. Little okay. side income. Okay, st Steve was complaining about the time running out, and then you. <laughs> <laughs> he pays for that hair gel, says uh, Tatiana. Yes, I think so. It's for the hair gel. Here we go then. Here's one for me. Now this is my personal one. So this is one that I might actually, you know, I might actually take up. <laughs> okay. Steve. Oh. Paul Rubens. Paul Rubens, better known as Pee Wee Herman. Right. Okay. <laughs> Hi everybody. <laughs> Pee Wee Herman. You can actually have a message from Pee Wee Herman, and I'm a big fan of him. Even though his career came to a sudden halt in the early 2000s for a certain reason, which I won't go into. But Paul Rubens, how much would it cost to get a hello from Pee Wee Herman himself? How much? Well, he was very famous. Mm. So I probably, yes, I, I'm going to say... Four hundred and fifty pounds. Four hundred and fifty pounds for Pee Wee yes, Herman. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. Do you know who Pee Wee Herman is? He was very famous and popular in the nineteen eighties and nineteen nineties. He also appeared in one of my all-time favourite films called Pee Wee's Big Adventure. If you've never seen it, it's very funny. So, <laughs> how much is Pee Wee Herman worth? Nobody's giving any suggestions, Mr. Duncan. A hundred and eleven pounds and fifty two pence. That's very precise. Thank you, Bella. Yes. Here we go, then. We will move along a little bit quicker because we have some big celebrities coming in a moment. You won't believe that the names that are coming up, Steve. OK. If you want to have Pee Wee Herman, <laughs> it will cost you. Quite reasonable. I think that's quite reasonable. Yes. Two, 207 pounds, <laughs> although that's still rather expensive. He had an interesting bike, says Vitas. Yes, his bike. Somebody stole my bike. <laughs> that's a good impersonation. Uh, Somebody stole my bike. <laughs> that's going to be very bad for your throat. <laughs> Well, again, people will get prepared to pay a lot more than two hundred and seven pounds. Yes, okay then. Four hundred and fifty-six. Are you sure? Are you sure you're not getting, um, no, sort of money for uh, promoting this website? Well, I'm not promoting it because I haven't told anyone the name of the site. I'm sure it's not difficult to find. Okay, then. Well, there are there are other sites as well that do this. Bella so. wants to know if Jesus Christ is on there. Th there is actually Jesus Christ on there. What? There is a man who, who looks surprisingly similar, but he is actually on there and you can get a personal message from him. You mean he looks like the uh, the image yeah. that we've all been told to expect what yes. Jesus Christ would have looked like? You know, the white guy. Long haired with, white man yeah. <laughs> with a beard. <laughs> because that's what you're going to find in the Middle East. If you go to yes. the centre of the Middle East, you're definitely going to find lots of tall handsome white guys definitely with long hair and beards yes 
Anyway, so, we better not uh, we better not uh, diss Jesus Christ. But, but <laughs> he is on there. There is a guy pretending to be Jesus. <laughs> He's going to get a thunderbolt from heaven. He is. It's it's incredible. But there How is much one. does he charge? You know, I can't remember. I think it's about it's around about a million pounds. It's about forty pounds, I think. <laughs> You're going to hell for that, I would say. That's still cheaper than giving a donation to your local church. Somebody's on there pretending to be Jesus Christ and making money out of <laughs> out of the fact that they look like. <laughs> what we in the West think that Jesus Christ may have looked like. Yes. So he's a white man in his 30s with long hair and a beard. Yes. And he looks like probably that famous film. Mm -hmm. Lots of films, haven't there been, with Jesus <laughs> yes. Christ in them? Jesus has appeared uh, in lots of movies. And he always looks much the same. So somebody's impersonating. That really, that must be heresy or, or blasphemy or something. Yes. Yes. That must be. Imagine another religion if you were to do that. Yeah. 500 years and ago. And make money from being. Okay, Steve. Steve. A pro prophet. Yeah. Pro not a very I good choice of words yes. there. <laughs> I, think, I probably would have used a different word there. but I think other, other religions might get very annoyed. Uh, okay, Steve. <laughs> Steve. Sometimes you have to know when to stop speaking. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway. <sighs> anyway. You charge fifty pounds for pretending to be Jesus Christ. That's unbelievable. It's 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 still it's good value though. It's very good value. Although the miracles aren't guaranteed. Bella says, I wonder if he performs <laughs> miracles. <laughs> Perhaps he turns water into wine. This feeds five thousand people. I think this is the from one loaf of bread. Okay, Steve. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think this is the funniest thing I've ever done. Here we go. We we have a big name now, Steve. Right. This is just for, for all of the cats. Is this the last one? Oh. <laughs> well, if, if you stop speaking over me, I might. <laughs> it might be the last one. I want to play the sentence game, Mr Duncan. Steve, we have a big one now. It's a big one. A big name. A big name in the world of rap. R&B. And the, the, they're getting down and digging it with the, the young, cool cats. A rap star. The young, cool cats. It's... Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Well, he's he's uh, doing TV adverts here in the UK <laughs> yeah. at the moment, so he must be desperate for money. Yes. Even though he must have made billions from his rapping career. Yes. <laughs> he will do anything for money, won't he? It obviously. It would appear that Snoop Dogg. Do, do you remember? I'm so old that I remember when he was called Snoop Doggy Dog. That's his original name. He used to be known as Snoop Doggy Dog. But now it's just Snoop Dogg because it's Well, sounds... I'm glad you've got a person of colour on here, Mr. Dogg, oh, because God. people might have thought we were being racist. Yes. I really well. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. OK. Is this is this what happens Snoop now? Snoop Dogg the rapper. Is this what we have to do now? Now Joe Biden is president. We have to we have to include everyone. I've also but I don't have any Eskimos, unfortunately. There are no Asians. So I'm going to get into a lot of trouble anyway, whatever I do. So so this is not going to please anyone. It Tatiana, really isn't. where are you, Tatiana? <laughs> She's seeing the advert with Snoop Dogg. Yes, he's, in it. he's on his big motorbike and he's, it's it's a food delivery service. <laughs> he looks dirty, doesn't he? He looks sort you, of... Oh, Steve, you Steve, know. Steve. What's the matter? N no, no, that's probably... Anyway, how much would it cost? <laughs> What's wrong? I'm just... You don't say that about anyone. Why not? If you wouldn't say it about your own mum, don't say it about anyone oh, else. Oh, Mr Duncan, calm down. It's fine. Let's just give you my opinion. Yes, but that's not a good a good opinion. Yeah. That's that's definitely not on Joe Biden's list of things oh, you can say. Be, don't be silly, Mr Duncan. No. Anyway, what does he charge? Snoop Dogg. I dog. think £800. <laughs> I still can't believe this. Oh, dear. So, yes, we have a black guy on here just to, to please everyone. <laughs> Hundred fifty pounds, says Sandra. YouTube now. Who is Snoop Dogg? Snoop Dogg says Valor. <laughs> Who is Snoop yes, Dogg? He's a rap star. He, and he's they get a rapper. Paid a lot of money. Well, he was a rapper about twenty-five years ago. <laughs> now he sells food delivery services. What does he charge? He charges. Oh, I was quite close. Yeah, seven hundred and forty-seven pounds will get yes. you a personal message from. 
Well, Valor, who hadn't heard of Snoop Dogg, was still prepared to spend £110. <laughs> so you were prepared, even though you've never heard of Snoop Dogg, you were prepared to pay £110 for uh, a complete stranger. Well, lol was very, very close, 795 Oh, dear. So very close. OK, we've got, a, we've got, some, we've got a big one coming next. Oh, it's a Duncan. Don't worry, Steve, calm down. Do you remember the 1980s? Well, yes. Just yes, yes. <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like I'm, I'm in court. Just answer the question, yes or no. Yes, but as long as there's, you know, people aren't... The 80s. You know, under the age of 40. Are you a fan of 80s actors? Yes or no? Some of them. OK. TJ Hooker. What a, well, he's not an actor, you see. He's a character. I know, but you, you know what I mean. I'm nope. talking about the uh, Star Trek. Star uh, Trek. Man. <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> TJ Hooker was in Star Trek. Yes. OK. Who remembers Steve Gutenberg? Steve Gutenberg, well-known actor from such hit films as Police Academy and <laughs> Cocoon. He was in that as well. But you can get a personal message from hollywood celebrity so he's he's a hollywood person he's hollywood a big film star and he will send you a birthday greeting but how much <laughs> <laughs> i won't i won't read out what some people have been saying and that only right okay oh well, well uh, no i'm not going to no because it's going back to uh, things which you might accuse me of being Huh? Uh, Why are you going quiet? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like somebody's turning the volume Steve down. Steve Gutenberg, who's heard of him? Yes. I have, but I don't don't remember any films that he was in. He was in. He was famously one of the first things. This is a strange piece of trivia, Mr. One, Duncan. We've only got ten minutes left to play the sentence game. Okay, don't worry about it. Steve Come Gutenberg. On. The first time Steve Gutenberg appeared in anything, he he appeared in, I think it was oh. Boys from Brazil. Fascinating. And, and he gets killed. He, he's only on screen for about five minutes and he gets killed. So that's his first ever role. But yes, the, Olga. But the funny thing is, when, it, when, he, when he dies, you can still see him breathing. So he wasn't very good at playing a dead person. Olga says, Steve Gutenberg looks familiar, but I don't remember where I've seen him. <laughs> yes, Police, he's one of those people. Police Academy. Police, Police Academy. Academy. Police Academy. Oh, yeah, OK. He was, um, in all, he was in all 25 Police Academy movies. <laughs> And uh, what else? What else was he? How Co much, Mr. Duncan? Cocoon. This has got to be the last one, surely. No, there's one more. Oh, there's, there's actually there's about twelve more. But well, I, why I, don't you? Uh, well, I think you've overworn this a bit, Mr. Duncan. I haven't. I love I this. Think you, I know you love it, but what? Steve Gutenberg will cost you. It's quite cheap. £166. That's Valentina says that uh, she would give him uh, 99p. <laughs> There's something uh, very sad about that. There was something sad because because I grew up in the 1980s, I, I know all, some of his work and it, it's a bit sad, isn't it, really? £166. Mr Duncan, our viewers are dropping. Yeah, but they are anyway. They normally do it this time, so don't worry about it. English. Hello. Welcome to English Addict. But today we're talking about being famous, celebrities and all of that thing. Belarusia is going. It's lunchtime now. Thank you, Belarusia. I hope you've enjoyed this. Something different today because we, we, we do the same thing every week. And I thought this week we would do something a little bit different. Shall we have just one more? Here's one more then, Steve. Here's one more. <laughs> I couldn't resist this. There is a guy who impersonates Donald Trump, but I have a feeling I, I have a feeling he might be out of work <laughs> pretty soon. <laughs> so here's a guy that makes a living from being Donald Trump. But you, I mean, maybe next week, Donald, Donald Trump will actually be on this website <laughs> selling himself. <laughs> hundred pounds, hundred pounds. I get the feeling Steve has lost all interest in this. Fake Trump. If you want a message from fake Donald Trump. <laughs> why, by the way, why would you want that? It would cost you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's not bad. 
although I think next week he might be on the same level as as Matt the cat 85p so I have a <laughs> feeling this might drop quite considerably over the next few days this this chart so Trump impersonator you can have him his message for 186 pounds <laughs> oh dear so what we need now is a Joe Biden impersonator so if there is an elderly man out there <laughs> just any any elderly man because that's what Joe Biden looks like he looks like any elderly man <laughs> so, so what are we doing now Mr Duncan I don't know we've only got five minutes left what about Santa Claus how much for Santa Claus Steve Santa Claus uh, uh, 10 pence 10 pence no you can get a message from Santa Claus because Christmas is coming and I think it might be the real Santa Claus and I, I think my beard <laughs> will slowly become like 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 his beard can you see so I think my beard is actually starting to turn into that one Santa Claus you can have a message from him for 41 pounds fantastic great yes lovely right let's for move on Mr Duncan 41 pounds I'd rather pretty. spend that on a present <laughs> are you planning to do anything else or is that it no we're going to play the sentence game but there's only four minutes left don't worry about it Steve Steve can I just say you worry too much well I'm looking at the comments I'm not alone Mr Duncan oh, I see. <laughs> well, what, 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 what's happening then nothing let's move on move on to the sentence game Mr Duncan yes well I think it's your face that's making everyone depressed <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know shall we play the sentence game okay we're yeah. going to have a quick sentence game before we go and it's coming up right now <laughs> bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Steve was just saying <laughs> he said Steve said you've done too much of that too much of it no one's interested in how much it costs to get a personal message oh, maybe a two or three would have been interesting I thought I thought the Jesus one was quite incredible but there is actually a guy on there pretending no more scones for Mr Duncan oh correct will we ha there will be plenty of scones this afternoon there will be scones and also Columbo it's Columbo day because it's Sunday so we will be watching Columbo. Here we go then, Steve. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready for the sentence game? We're going to play it very quickly. Is there quick. anyone left to play? Yes, of course. You have you doubt my viewers. I'm sure that this was quite fun. I think so. I, I enjoyed it anyway. <laughs> and so did my next door neighbour who's listening through the window. Well, I enjoyed it for about ten minutes. Here we go. <laughs> Steve. The sentence game random yes. letters here is the first one right now are you ready come on there we go that decision something right something something the something mm. oh four words Mr Duncan yes we have four words making it extra hard for you I feel as though we're getting back on track now I'll be back on track that decision so, C. so if you are watching the replay I will put a link where you can skip all of that so all of what just happened you can skip it <laughs> I thought it was it made me chuckle it made me laugh yes. it really did I thought it was quite funny to to actually get <laughs> you know you have to know when to finish something see Malia Malia says Mr Duncan it really is a nice lesson I learned something new here thank you okay thank Fly you very much finally the sentence game <laughs> thank you very much I know there are some people that that love love it when I do different things so something different today here we go then so now now we're getting complaints about the sentence game it's too hard that decision something right something something the something Tomek where are you Tomek give us the correct answer <laughs> oh Sergio come out of book come, you, you might be near there you are very near with that answer very near Mosin said it was a very good idea see Mosin likes it thank you Mosin creeps thank you for your creeps th thank you very much for agreeing 
I need to check later to make sure there isn't a Mr. Duncan impersonator <laughs> pretending to be me. Although there are lots of them on YouTube. Oh, did you see what I did there? Oh, I fired a shot. Ooh. Here we go, then. That decision something four words beginning with C. Yeah. <laughs> no, not not that word. <laughs> Is it to do with celebrities? It is not random letters. They're just random letters. There's no connection to celebrities or stardom. Thought you might have continued with that. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we might be we might be going back to the celebrity Ooh, messages in a minute if this that. doesn't if this doesn't improve. Well, I think we've got to, we've got a success. Somebody's already got it. Really? Yes. Where? Ah, oh, Valentina. Mm, Valentina. Valentina. Well I see. Valentina. Very good. The answer we're looking for is. Oh, Tomek. Let's have a look. Tomek says, "I don't play anymore. You must play." Oh, yes, don't, don't do that. that. Don't 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 start sulking. Don't throw your toys out of the pram. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Can you play? Can you play along? Come on. We'll have none of that. It's bad enough having a big baby in the White House. Well, not anymore, of course. <laughs> Here we go, then. The answer. Mm. That decision, something, right. Something, something, the something. And then we will explain what it means. The answer is blowing in the wind. Bing. That decision came right out of the blue. So something comes out of the blue. It is something that you weren't expecting something that comes out of the blue if something appears unexpectedly or maybe you are required to do something that you weren't expecting to do you can say that it came out of the blue that decision came right out of the blue like it came out of the sky yes which is literally what it means yes so, so something that suddenly appears. Um, oh, that came out of the blue. Yeah, I so was. I wasn't expecting that. So somebody might say some. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Yeah. Duncan. <laughs> OK, that's the uh, that's the uh, the water and and the scones. So that was a mixture of water and scone there coming up from Mr. Steve's tummy. So if somebody said something and you weren't expecting them to say something. You might be surprised. You're like, oh, that came out of the blue, out of the blue. OK, yes. let's have what let's have maybe one more or two more. We'll try two more. Sergio uh, has used an alternative. Uh, OK, it's only got three letters. It does. <laughs> it's gone. Here we go. We're moving on. The next one. The next sentence game. Everybody. I could not something having something, something of something, something. Oh, my goodness. One, two, three. Five, five missing I words. I could not. Five words. Yeah, we might need Tomek for this one. You see, now, now I, I bet you are wishing that I would show you how much it would cost <laughs> to get a message from from Paul Chuckle. Paul Chuckle is a famous TV star in England. He presents or used to with his twin brother. But sadly, his twin brother died. So now he is on his own. But yes, Paul Chuckle, you see, you could have found out how much a message from him would have cost. But now we can't, you see, because Steve said we must move on. I could not something having something, something of something, something. Well, you had prepared these, obviously. It takes a lot of time to do this. Hours and hours it's I spend doing this. <laughs> So, yes, by it came out of the blue, we just mean something unexpected. Yes. You weren't expecting it. Huh. Where did that come from? What, that... A, what a surprise. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Are there some scones left? Yes, but not for Mr. Duncan. Hello to Fanny Rodriguez, who says, I've learned a lot and I've also improved my listening. Thank you. Yes. You see? Another, another thumbs up, another thumb. Don't forget to give me a nice like as well. Give me a like. Oh, talking of likes. Likes. 
haven't seen Pedro today. Where is Pedro, Where is Bell? Pedro? Pedro. Pedro's normally encouraging everybody to uh, send the likes. Where is Pedro Belmont? Well, we have suggestions for the first word. OK. Uh, could that be right? <laughs> Vitas and Lewis have Ta suggested uh, <laughs> what the first word could be. OK. Uh, <laughs> Tomek, we need you. We, don't, don't, don't go away, Tomek. Tomek is sulking now. I don't think he is. He's far too mature. You do. You're a grown you, up. Steve sulks. Steve sulks. If Steve doesn't have his own way, he sits in the corner of the room with his arms folded, and he he could he, not resist. But uh, <laughs> yes, I think is that correct? Is that the first word, Mr. Duncan? Is Vitas correct? Is Lewis correct? Yes. Ah. Yes, you've got part of that right, Vitas. Ah, yes. And I think Beatrice may have got the second word. We might be going on until Joe Biden's inauguration at this rate. <laughs> is that correct? Uh, is that the correct word for the second one? Mm, yes, got. very good. Yes. So we've got two letters. We are piecing it together. It's, it's a bit like Columbo. When Columbo is investigating a crime, what he does, he watches things and looks very carefully and he tries to fill in the missing pieces. Beatrice. Yes. Yeah, so we've got the first word is definitely resist. The second word is other, another. I could not resist having another something of something something i will give you a big clue it is connected to what we did in the kitchen last night oh you see it's connected to what we did in the kitchen mr steve and myself we did something something very messy it caused a lot, <laughs> a lot of mess we had to clean up afterwards <laughs> what we what there was flower dust everywhere flower dust and <laughs> there was dough everywhere <laughs> it's connected to that <laughs> uh, what nurse <laughs> are, you, are you are you at a seance or something steve so it looks like you're trying to get in touch with the other side. I is it? it is having another one. Is one the third word? It might be. Is there anyone there? But if it is, I can't see. If that Steve's is the third, is the other one? You know, it doesn't. Have you put the of in the wrong place? No. No. OK. <laughs> I'll have to give the answer in a moment because it, we'll be here till Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, so everyone. So we know the first word is resist having another. <laughs> and you think this is more exciting than my website? Is is the third word one? <laughs> O-N-E. Yes. I, th I thought I'd said that already. I can't form a sentence from that, Mr. Duncan. I could not something having something, something of something, something. I'll have to give the answer because <laughs> YouTube will be running out of bandwidth <laughs> at this rate. <laughs> the answer is it looks as if I've stumped everyone. Oh, sure. Bing. Bing. Ah. Well, people have said that, but it. Yes, I could not resist no, having. No, the is in the wrong place, Mr. Duncan. Yes, no, it's fine. I could not resist having another one of Steve's scones. Oh right, it's in the right place. I. What's what's wrong? Why is that? Why is that sentence? Oh, wrong? I, I can't. Uh... I could not resist having 
another one of Steve's scones. OK, right. Yes. That's it then. In that case, uh, Vitas got it right. So yes. does Valentin. Uh, yeah. I could not resist having another one of Steve's scones. It's correct. Uh, Loretta, it. Loretta got it right as well. Steve has so little faith in me. <laughs> At night, I lie in bed weeping. The gentle sound of my sobbing fills the night air as my pillow becomes wet and damp with my warm, salty tears. That sort of thing. <laughs> I could not resist having another one of Steve's scones is the answer. There it is. One more. Because it's your fault, by the Do way. Do that. Anyway, right. Never What's mind. wrong? Anyway, it's right. You can, have another one right. Of, you can have another one of something. Yes. Oh, yes. I know. Yes, it's all right. It's all right. I thought the of was in the wrong place. No, it isn't. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Maybe you should tune in to my lessons more often. <laughs> Here we go. It's getting dark outside, Mr. Duncan. It is getting dark. Yes, it's getting dark in my mind as well. Here we go. One more and then we'll go. Definitely. Here we go. I didn't something to make a something, so I had to something it. Ooh. Come on, Tomic. Come on. Come on, Tomic. Tomic. Now, Tomic was in time out, you see. But Tomic, you can now disengage from time out. Even Tomic is welcome to take part in this one. I didn't something to make it to make a something, so I had to something it. Yes, Steve's wants an apostrophe, doesn't it? Does it? Um, yes. Steve's, yes. Oh, yes, but... Um, Fly, you are correct. That's it, yes. That's it. But you would, but you know, we're not <laughs> yeah. counting apostrophes no. in the sentence you going, don't. but yes, you are correct. Yes. If you were writing it out, you would put an apostrophe. Because it's possessive. When we have a possessive clause in a sentence, you always put an apostrophe before the end. Uh, I didn't something to make a something, so I had to something it. Oh, yes. First word begins with I, six mm. letters. Second word begins with S, six letters. Tatiana has the first word. Tatiana, well done. Oh, we are getting right. there already, you see. It's like having it's like having lots of detectives watching at the same time you see mm. there are some columbos out there Bella got it right as well there are some kojaks out there maybe there are some <laughs> kojaks kojak who remembers kojak who loves you baby and he he was always mm. the first letter is i sucking Zika. he was always sucking on his lollipop i i and we already know it's intend so I didn't intend to make a something, so I had to something it. Mm. Jimmy from Hong Kong. Hello, Jimmy. Nice to see you here. Wipe. I had to wipe it. What is the mm. first letter? Well, the first letter is the first one is I six letters S six letters and W four letters but what is it I don't think it's scone no we, we, we've had we've this moved on from scone we've had that already we had the scone already the scone has gone I didn't intend to make a mm -hmm. so something that you were going to not do but then you had to do maybe you are at a wedding reception maybe you are at the wedding reception and someone asks you to do something that you weren't intending to do what might you do you might use your mouth to do it <laughs> steady ah right okay yes. i think i know i didn't intend to make a something so i had to something it so this is an expression that means to do something without any planning. You use your own initiative to do it. This is quite difficult. Yes. Well, that is why it's called. I think. Yes, that's why you see. So what happens when you stand up and talk? 
yes. a lot what to do a you group have, of people. Yes, what do you have to make? What if, are you doing when you do that? If you have to, t- oh, sorry, if you have to talk oh. to a lot of people. <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve. I hurt Steve then with my sharp watch. My razor sharp metal watch. Yes. Bella. Ah, is yes. Correct. Bella has got the next one. I didn't intend to make a speech. Ah, yes, you see. So if you didn't intend to do it, it was not planned. It was not planned. So, what's a word from yes? Oh, Tomek. 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 I, I think that deserves a round of applause. That was a hard one. It was. Tomek's come to the rescue. Thank you, Tomek. You see, Tom, the others were too easy for him. OK. So he waited to a difficult one to yes. show his metal, his uh, his power of English. His power of English. I think he's better at speaking English than I am. Yes. <laughs> I think his knowledge of English is better than me. You know what? I believe that. <laughs> you ought to set up an English teaching channel, Tomic. Uh, well I, done. I didn't intend to make a speech, so I had to wing it yes so we're going to explain that fly <laughs> that fly yes fly audi oh i see <laughs> it's the name of somebody on okay. your youtube channel watching today uh i didn't intend to make a speech so i had to wing it if you wing it it means you do something without any preparation or planning you have to suddenly do it you, you just have... make it up as you go along yes i had to wing it i had to improvise you wing yes. it. So if you wing something, it means you do it without any preparation or any planning. Yes, sometimes you might deliberately do it. Other times, like if you were not intending to make a speech, you might be forced to wing it. But usually it applies. I mean, you might go for a job interview and you don't do any preparation at all. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I'm not worried. I'll just wing it. Mm. So it's quite commonly used if you're going for interviews for something and you don't intend to prepare for the interview. Mm. Oh, I'm going for a job interview tomorrow. Oh, aren't you worried? Why haven't you prepared for that job interview? No, I'm just going to wing it. Yes. I'm, so uh, you're just... No preparation. Yeah. Off the top of your head. Yes. Steve. Is it no, time to go? It's almost time to go. It's what do you mean al almost? Almost time to go. It's almost time to go. I'm getting tired. One more. Come on, Steve. Let, oh. me have, let me have one more. I want to, I've got to go outside for it. It's dark, Mr. Let Jordan. me have one more. Steve's going to be so angry at me. I'm going to get beaten tonight. Beaten until my bottom is cherry red. Off the cuff. Yes, speak off the cuff. Charlie yes. Sheen. Charlie Sheen. There Bella, he is. That's Ch similar. You can get a message from Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. You remember Charlie Sheen? He was a big star in the, the 80s and 90s and even the 2000s until... He threatened the producer of the situation comedy that he was appearing on. And then uh, then he was sacked, <laughs> which is never a good idea, by the way. Never threaten the life of the person who <laughs> gives you employment. <laughs> it's not never good. Charlie Sheen, if you want a message from Charlie Sheen, Steve. Two hundred. I would have thought it would have been more than that. Yeah, Two hundred and ninety four pounds. How much was Snoop Dogg? Much more than that. Yes, I don't know why Charlie Sheen would be a lot less. Charlie Sheen is one of those strange celebrities who who seems to come and go on a regular basis. He's he's a bit like he's a bit like a comet that that orbits <laughs> our solar system. He comes around now and again. So if you want Charlie Sheen, you can have him <laughs> for two hundred and forty nine pounds. What so, would he say? I mean, what's what's well known that he would he could why is he so well known that he what, well, what would he say he hasn't got any catchphrases he's well known for quite a few things i mean i can see for example if arnie arnold schwarzenegger okay was on there yeah you know you could pay for him to say to a friend of yours at the birthday you know i'll be back or something like that you know you i You've got to have a catchphrase, I would have thought, for it to work. Yes, I think so. <laughs> what's, I don't know what's Charlie Sheen's. Charlie, I think Charlie Sheen's is pass me the cocaine. 
<laughs> That's a bit scandalous. No. Libelous, even. Mr. I, don't, I don't think it's libelous. I don't think it is. In fact, I'm pretty sure it isn't. Well, you <laughs> might get Charlie Sheen <laughs> on the phone to you. Trust me, Steve. I won't. Right. Here we go. Then it's, so off. it's time to go. It's time to say goodbye. We've had a big one today, a long one. And we've done a lot of things actually today. I, I hope you've enjoyed this English lesson. Something different. We're not the same as other people. <laughs> you may have noticed we are different from other English teachers. Oh, we we're different. We talk about different things. We do it our way. As Frank Sinatra once said, now the end is near. And so we face the final curtain. My friends, we say it clear of which we are certain. And I've lived a life that's full. He's lived a life that's full. I've travelled each and every highway. Every highway. And more. More. Much more than this. We did it our, our way. way. Our way. We should have sung that, but never mind. It's almost as if he rehearsed that, but we didn't. It is, we didn't. No, no rehearsal Time. at all. Yeah, we're worth at least £500 for that. Yes. Ta-ta, everyone. See you next week. I'm going into the uh, into the kitchen to make a cup of tea and a tea cake. Thank you, Steve. Or are we having a scone? Another scone. We're having a... I'm having the rest of my scone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Mr. Steve is leaving the building. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. And that was it. That was the whole thing. That was all of today's English Addict. I hope you've enjoyed it. Something different. I know I'm going to get punished by Steve <laughs> for making him work so late until it went dark outside. That's it. See you next Sunday. I'm back with you, of course, next Sunday. I might even appear during the week. I'm not sure at the moment. It just depends because I'm... I'm doing other things at the moment as well. I hope you enjoyed today's live stream. Thank you for your company today. It's always nice to have you here. And can I just say I appreciate you giving your time to watch me. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching. Have a good time. Is there one more celebrity I can squeeze in? <laughs> what about what about fake Willy Wonka? You can have Willy Wonka from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but it's not the real one. It's a fake one. And you can have fake Willy Wonka from TikTok for £62. That's incredible. <laughs> and of course, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Ta-ta for now. <laughs>